Hello gorgeous people. Today I'm going to be doing a simple page in my travel journal and this one is going to test out the blending properties of the Catherine Poole inks. So I'm going to be completing this in my mixed media um, traveler's journal and it just has mixed media paper in here. I'm not going to be nice to these inks so I want to see if they can work on a lot of different surfaces not just the recommended paper. So this one is going to be a mini map in a circle. So I've taken the page out of the journal and the first thing I need to do is add my little map from Alton U to the middle of the page. So I've just made some um, little marks to give me a guide. So I'm just going to start off with some Versamark and make a nice resist image. And I'll be embossing with some Lindy's Clearly Clear Powder. Try and make sure that's well covered. And then I'm just putting this over the top as a guide and stamping onto the paper. Once that image is on, cover it in embossing powder and heat with a heat tool. All right, now because I've tapped off some of the embossing powder, some of that might not be quite as crisp as it could otherwise be, but at least I've got a separation between Australia and India, so which seems kind of important. Now I could have chosen to do this in a colour, black or gold for example, but I really like the look of the clear, so I'm going to give that, that a go. Now it's important that you make sure it's well heated, you don't want any of it coming off afterwards. Now because it's just a single layer of embossing powder, you've got quite a lot of texture in there, so I may have some bits of colour um, that cling in some of those areas. But we'll see, that could make it more interesting. All right, so I have a very cool little stencil from Stencil Girl, which turns out to be practically perfect in size. Now the only thing I don't know is if it's centered. So my circle is now about the middle. I'm just gonna tape this stencil onto the paper before I get started. So now that it's taped down and I know it won't be wiggling, I have a selection of Catherine Paula inks I'm going to be using. I have Sweet 16, Sugared Lavender, Royal Treatment, and Juniper Mist. And these will match beautifully with the washi tape that I have. Now, these inks are all a similar color family, so they should blend beautifully. Now, I know I'm a bit of a mess, so I'm also going to cover the bits of paper around my image and that way I can't accidentally color something that I shouldn't. So I'm going to start with Sweet 16 because this is the palest color and I'm just going to lay it down over the background in what I hope is an even layer. Now this is the first time I've used the Catherine Pooler inks um, for blending so we'll see how it goes. Now this is not special blending paper, it's not the recommended Catherine Pooler paper, it's not even recommended blending paper, it's just paper. So if it was going to look like a mess, it would probably be on here. Now I'm working hard to add color in an even swirling motion, but not too much color at once. Now the darker this is, the more your map will stand out. But I'd like to add a nice coat of the pink to start with. Now I'm really pressing and swirling that around the map border um, just so I get some pretty colour. Now I'd say that's pretty successful even on just generic paper so this wasn't anything special. I'm going to move on to the sugared lavender. So this is oh much darker I'm glad I tried that first. And with this I'm going to start creating my slightly darker layers. Now I just made a bit of a boo-boo there. I didn't um, swirl the ink properly to start with so I've made a bit of a mark. I'm hoping that that will fade as I add more layers of colour. Now with these additional colours I'm only going to add it sort of around the edges to make a frame. Now 
I could be working on a blending mat here, which would make this a little bit easier. And I could swirl my ink onto the blending mat uh, without wasting any. I might try that next time. So that is the sugared lavender over the top of Sweet 16. You can see that's actually blending quite well. I'm quite impressed so far. Next is going to be the color called Royal Treatment. Oh, this looks quite dark. Oh yeah. In fact, I might not need that juniper mist. This might be just all I need. Let's see. So again, with that same swirling motion. And here is to darken the edges. Which is working really, really well. And what I'm going to do just to add a bit of extra depth here is I'm almost using this as a stamp. I'm just going and adding a little bit of additional color around that edge there. Oh, that's beautiful and dark, that. This is where I see if I can bring it all together. So I'm going back to the Sweet 16. I might still add some of the Juniper Mist on the edge, but I won't use one of these large tools. Get a bit more ink on here. Just go over the top. those colors a little oh, that's pretty Let me just lift it up and see this is why I cover things so I have a really pretty background with dark and light I've lost the mid-tone tiny bit perhaps I can get that back I might try a smaller tool, I think. So I've got some of these little color box tools. Might just add a bit of the sugared lavender on here. Sneak that mid-tone back into things. Awesome. I'm not going to bother changing the tool or the head. I'm just going to add the juniper mist. Make sure I've got the color on there. Yep. Just directly around the edges. Just to darken that whole thing up a little. Oh, that's super yum. I'm just going to use it to add a little bit of... Oh, no, I'm not. That's just gorgeous. Love it. Just like that. All right. So I've tried blending with both the Tim Holtz Distressing Blending Tool and the Colorbox Blending Tool. And as you can see, the results are gorgeous. And I have a beautiful layer of color. Um, beautiful gradation of color. Looks so pretty. All right, so next I have a nice water brush from Prima with a nice thick top. I'm not going to use it as a water brush. I'm just going to squeeze to get some water into the tip and then use it to add splatters across the Catherine Puller ink because it's supposed to be water reactive. Whoops, that was a bit more of a splot than I had anticipated. Now one of the things that made me want to test this, and thank you to Catherine for sending me some inks to play with so I could, is it says they have properties like distress inks, and you know how I love distress inks, but these are in a whole different range of colours. Um, so I wanted to see what you could do with them, how they would work, and if they were as cool as they sounded. Now I'm adding quite a lot of water here in flicks because I'd like to end up with some patterns. So I'm adding some quite big splatters and I might even add 
a run. So I'd like to see if it runs. I'd like to see what happens to the ink. You know, have a bit of a play. Um, in the back of my mind here, I'm thinking kind of future project night sky. But we'll see how we go. Now, I am getting some beautiful patterns and variations here. I might just cheat a little bit, I think, and add a bit of the smooshy ink from around the edges here, just to encourage things along. You know how I don't like to wait. And the other thing I'd like to do is clean up some of that embossing. So I'm just going to blot. Hmm, well that's actually giving me some really interesting watermarks. Just let me let that dry. All right, so that has given particularly yummy splatters and fading and the information's right. It does look like it works quite a bit like Distress Ink. Beautiful, beautiful um, options available. The only thing I need to know now is can I add more? So perhaps if I added a drop just here and let it sit for a second. Yes, it does continue to activate. Oh, that's cool. All right, so you can get multiple layers. So you could do one with big splatters followed by one with little splatters. Um, it didn't run as much as I was hoping it might, which is a weird thing to say when you're talking about ink because you usually don't want it to run. But um, I had to encourage it and put a bit of extra color over here to get that little run mark. So it's very water reactive, but it didn't run a lot once you'd stamped it, which is also kind of cool to know. Um, I really like the way that that looks. I think I might need to add a little gold in here though. So I'm just going to add some watercolor gold over the top. These are Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. Just add a little, I think, maybe pale gold. So I've just activated that with some water. I'm going to sit the stencil back over the top just so I don't splatter the whole page. I mean, it might not stop me splattering the whole page, but I can at least try. Now, the really cool thing is on the wet bits, it's actually star bursting um, and spreading out and wicking. I might just add a few little speckles around this so it doesn't look quite so naked on the page. And then I'm ready to add some stamping and finish it off. How cool and simple was that? Now the nice thing is that would make an awesome card front or a scrapbooking page embellishment. So many uses and that's, um, wow, those Catherine Puller inks blend beautifully. But this just gives me a whole extra palette to work with. So once that's dry, I'll be able to go and add my final touches to this gorgeous page. Isn't that so cool? I'm loving the patination that I'm getting there. That is really, really awesome. If you would like to see how I finish off this page, please stick with me. So the next thing I've got is a Copic Multiliner 0.5 and another circle stencil because I love these things. And I am just going to draw around here, leaving a couple of little spaces. Now if you would like a really black line, do this twice, but know that the Copic marker is not paper friendly, and this is not Copic marker paper, so it will likely bleed through to the other side. I'm about to find out. Not as bad as I thought. Okay, so I've got that nice little line. All right, so I've just got Catherine's Going Wear stamp set. I have a sneaky suspicion this might be one I end up using quite a bit. The little plane, inking my stamp very gently. Isn't that super cute? Love it. And that's just the little midnight mini ink pad. Um, and that just gives something a little bit extra. Um, to my design here. I, I love it. It's so cute. I could have even done three of them, but I figured I'd just do two. Now I'm going to start finishing off this page and I've chosen these colors because I had this awesome washi from Simply Gilded and it's got world maps and then little travel phrases. So I'm just going to position this around the page and see where I like it best. 
So I've added a little tape to the top and bottom. Now I just have to finish the page off. So I think I'm going to add the nice thin Wanderlust in black. And again I'm going to use the Midnight Ink Pad. Committed now. Alright, so on this particular paper, which is, as I've mentioned before, nothing particularly special, the black, um, I think it, I think you would call it feathers a little, so it's not super, super crisp. Um, it's got a few little jaggy bits, but as I said, the paper's not particularly smooth, it's not specialist paper, um, but the black on here has, on just on that text stamp, the little, um, planes seem fine maybe because they're more bold so good to note I will try the black on some proper stamping paper and see if I get different results now I'm almost finished here I think what I might like to do is go over that black with some gold maybe just to add some something something give this a whirl so it's PH Martin's or Dr. PH Martin's iridescent calligraphy colors this one is copper plate gold. It's one of my most reliable favorites. I don't know if you've seen me use this before. It's just a standard oblique pen. This one's from Moblique and you can get some really pretty colors. You just dip it in the ink and then draw over the top. Yeah, I think that's gonna work nicely. Just make sure it's all nice and inky. Now I'm just simply tracing over the black letters here. I'm not trying to hide it completely or do any fancy calligraphy because I just want it to look neater and have a bit of gold shimmer. Now once that's dry you can add another layer if you want to but try not to go over it while it's wet because you can tear the paper. Um, I know this from experience because I've done that a lot. And I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, I really like the fact that the world is the main image and it is really dark and then you've got the splashes of metallic a little bit of washi tape top and bottom here. I think it might need a little black line or something maybe to help tie it together but it's got the world uh, echoed down here. Loving the gold over the Wanderlust stamp and obviously you can't feel it but it's slightly raised. And the little circle around the outside with the planes is super cute. So I'm loving this. And I know it's simple, but it's going to be the perfect first page here. Now, this is mixed media cardstock, so it's a bit thicker than normal. And I'm happy to say that in spite of the amount of ink I've added on here, where I've added the stamps, there's a tiny bit of show through, which means that you can slightly see it on the other side, but there's no bleed through. So even where I've added the most of the ink, None of that ink has seeped through to the other side of the page, so I can still use it and add things on here, which is really cool. So I'm going to start on my next page now. I hope you've enjoyed this first page in my mixed media travel journal. Um, I've certainly enjoyed doing it, testing out all those yummy new products. So join me and see where I'm going. Bye.